It's battleground Jacksonville as President Obama and Donald Trump try to bring in the votes. Days before the general election, some polls call it too close to call in Florida. You're going to hear from both men calling it a monumental decision for America. We're also talking about some of the issues, including solar energy. All these parade of horribles our opponents have said that are going to happen are not true in and of itself of Amendment 1. And Duval County's referendum on slot machines. But really what they're doing is they're adding uh, more regulation to an already very strictly regulated uh, gaming entertainment complex here in the local community. Those are the topics leading up to Election Day on This Week in Jacksonville. Republican nominee for president Donald Trump made another campaign stop in Northeast Florida. He did that Thursday, only a week and a half since his trip to St. Augustine for a rally. Hillary for America couldn't spare the Democratic nominee, but following three stops in Jacksonville this campaign cycle for former President Bill Clinton, Secretary Clinton got the local support of the current commander-in-chief. President Barack Obama became the first sitting president to visit the University of North Florida as he encouraged everyone to get out the vote. President Barack Obama. That's the ovation offered by Jacksonville to President Barack Obama as he arrived inside the arena at UNF. The president wrapped up a get-out-the-vote trip to Florida by leading the course of 7,200 Hillary Clinton supporters, a thousand more of them in an overflow building next door. I'm, I'm a proud Democrat, but, but, but we... No, no, hold on. We're, we are not Democrats or Republicans first. We are children of God. We are, we are, we are human beings. We are Americans first. Steve Shale is the Episcopal High School graduate who served as State of Florida Director for Mr. Obama in 2008 and a Florida Senior Advisor in 2012. Well, you know, we're actually here eight years to the day from his last rally in 2008 in Florida. And he's here for the same reason today that he was then, which was to excite voters, get people out. Shale says this excitement is exactly what the Clinton campaign wanted. Jacksonville Pastor John Newman excited by shaking the hand of the commander in chief. Did you get to meet the president? Yeah, I did. In fact, I said to him, I said, finish strong. He says exactly what I'm trying to do. It was awesome. <laughs> More than 4,000 people attended a rally for Donald Trump at the Jacksonville Equestrian Center, 32 miles away on the west side. The Republican nominee continued his attacks on Clinton, something his supporters reveled in. We are fighting for every citizen who believes that government should serve the people, not the donors and not the special interests. Just amazing, just to be together with all these supporters and, and to actually see my fellow supporters in the sea, who else out there that I may know that may have doubted actually supporting Trump and knowing that they're with me and they're with America. Donald Trump spoke for about 40 minutes beginning about noon on that Thursday, and he referenced Jacksport and bringing state-of-the-art ships to Mayport. President Obama spoke about 45 minutes and wrapped things up by saying he's not on the ballot this time, but all that's been accomplished the past eight years is both rallies emphasized uh, emphasize that is the need to vote and joining us here in studio dr michael bender from university of north florida first off what is that uh, kind of reaction to uh, having the president on campus a sitting president for the first time uh, it, exciting doesn't even begin to describe it the campus was electric on thursday students were out in force getting there as early as six and seven a.m uh, it was just it was really a fantastic day yeah and in terms of his speech boy he was on wasn't he top of his speaking game. If it you is it is unbelievable the, the, the speech that he delivered. He was energetic. He was going off script enough to bring the crowd into it, but sticking to key points, hammering them home. The crowd was hanging on every word. Uh, it was really, it was an electric, electric day. Yeah, and Donald Trump talks about his campaign events, and we've seen it. They are events uh, where lots and lots of people come, lots of supporters. Both campaigns at this point, so close to the election, are they trying to persuade People, are they still undecided they're trying to get to, or are they try, just trying to say to their group, their supporters, please make sure you check the box? It's, it's, it's checking the box. It's get, getting these people, getting their butts to the polling station, yeah. making sure they fill out that absentee ballot that got sent to them a couple of weeks ago. That's really the action right now. The, the, the undecideds, if there are any, weren't at either of these campaign rallies. They were right. home on the couch. Yeah, you direct the uh, Public Opinion Research Laboratory at UNF. Polls? Are, are they that important at this point? They have been all along, right? They have been all along, and you can see that here in Florida. You know, Patrick Murphy 
did not get a lot of support from the National Democratic Party in, the, in his race. And part of the reason was he was polling so poorly. Uh, Obama gave him a little bit of a rub yesterday and spoke mm -hmm. for about 10 minutes uh, about Murphy. But that's the influence of polls and doing them right and making sure you have a sense of what the people actually are thinking. Yeah, final thought, 20 seconds or less. More polling now or, hey, we just have to see exit polls? I, I, think, it, I, I, th th I think it's, it's ballots cast. It's looking at the Supervisor of Elections websites and the State Supervisor of Elections website and watching here on Channel 4 Tuesday night. Yeah, good point and appreciate your uh, participation Monday and Tuesday night with us. Thank you, Dr. Bender. Thanks for having me. All right, still ahead, a look at the solar amendment and your chance to meet the man running for Congress against Jacksonville's former sheriff. First, the slot machine issue on the ballot on This Week in Jacksonville. The American moment is here. Two choices, two Americas, decided by you. Hillary Clinton will keep us on the road to stagnation. Fewer jobs, rising crime, America diminished at home and abroad. Donald Trump will bring the change we're waiting for. America, better, stronger, more prosperous for everyone. A plan for tomorrow, a future brighter than our past. The choice is yours. I'm Donald Trump and I approve this message. I, Hillary Rodham Clinton, do solemnly swear that I will support... Not so fast. Clinton destroyed 30,000 emails, many under subpoena. The FBI director said Clinton's claims on classified material were not true. Clinton has faced numerous criminal investigations, and 60% of Americans think she's not honest. Now the FBI has reopened the investigation of Clinton's email scandal. Should we elect a president too consumed by scandal to lead? Future 45 is responsible for the content of this advertising. Islamic terrorists attacked our ambassador's compound in Benghazi. I was there. My friends didn't make it. Hillary Clinton's State Department denied requests for more security. Then she lied to protect herself. Now, Congressman Murphy has this to say about Benghazi. Hey, Hillary, I, I don't think you did anything wrong. Congressman Murphy's weakness is a threat to your freedom. The NRA Institute for Legislative Action is responsible for the content of this advertising. Election Night 2016. For a race like no other, you need local coverage like no other. On America's Biggest Night, News 4 Jax is the only local station covering both local and national issues. Breaking down how your friends and neighbors are voting. Real-time results on your phone. And for the first time ever, Channel 4 takes over the world's largest scoreboards. Election Night, only on Channel 4 and News4Jax.com. Special coverage starts at 7. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville with Kent Justice. And Brian Hughes joins us to discuss County Referendum 1 in Duval County. This is about slot machines. And Brian's a political consultant and you're working with Families for Safety and Prosperity and Best Bet. So tell me the, the thoughts here. We've seen some advertising now and I'm hearing some people saying, hey, I'm not sure about this gambling stuff. You're saying it's gaming and an expansion. Well, the first thing people need to understand is ultimately it's a jobs and economic package. What it does is it allows a state-licensed paramutual, which is the best bet company here in Duval County, that has uh, one facility on Monument Road here in the Regency neighborhood. It allows them to add to an already uh, existing list of gaming options one more game slot machines. Uh, the games that exist already, there's a poker room, there's simulcast paramutual betting, uh, and it's a facility here in the local community that's already employing hundreds of people and provides uh, quite a bit of benefit to the local economy and is a good corporate neighbor to the, in that neighborhood. So um, they need to under, people need to understand that the yes vote is uh, bringing more jobs and more revenue to Duval County. How do you know it's bringing more jobs? Uh, you're talking about expansion of a particular gaming option uh, there. Is it just those jobs or is it surrounding areas? Well, what we've seen in an economic study done by a third party is that uh, in addition to the 650 team members that Best Bet already has, we would be adding uh, both direct and indirect jobs. So there would be folks inside the facility that are there to be part of the new game option. Uh, in addition to that, if you go into that area in Regency where Best Bet uh, has the Monument Road facility, you'll find retailers and restaurants in the area that are, um, that are excited about the opportunity to have more traffic come through that neighborhood because um, they see Best Bet as a good neighbor. They see their businesses get customers and, and the restaurants get customers 
from folks who already go to Best Bet to enjoy gaming entertainment and then and come out in, into the neighborhood. Some of the criticisms that, that we've gotten here, hey, I think, and some of that is, doesn't it create a monopoly for the business owner, in this case, of Best Bet? Well, Best Bet is the only state-licensed paramutual in Duval County, so the question really does pertain to their facility. But understand that there are other companies all around the state of Florida that hold paramutual licenses. But in this local area, local county referendum, um, it, it impacts the best bet facility and the state license that they hold. But really what they're doing is they're adding uh, more regulation to an already very strictly regulated uh, gaming entertainment complex here in the local community. And they're generating more revenue for the local government and creating jobs with their yes vote. How much more revenue? Probably hard to tell, but I'm sure in the background, before this even came to city council or what have you, is a proposal that some research has been done there. Yeah, that's right. And we presented our economic study to uh, city council. We had an 18 to 1 vote in city council, and then the mayor approved it for the ballot. Uh, that economic study says a minimum of about 4 and a half to $5 million in revenue. Um, there's revenue directly that will come to the local government from the local facility. And then in addition to that, paramutuals are required to give a healthy amount of money back to the state. And then the state law uh, requires much of that money to come back to the local area. So really there are two new or additional revenue streams that the local government can expect with the yes vote. Maybe final thing on this topic. I know some folks are just in general, hey, I don't want slot machines in our neighborhoods. And, hey, isn't this creating maybe casino light in Jacksonville? What do you say to those folks? Well, listen, the, the, the gaming uh, issue's already there. St the best bet facility is regulated by the state. They hold the paramutual license. Really, all we're doing is to one place where people can enjoy gaming entertainment, we're adding one more game. So even if you're not uh, a proponent of gaming, um, understand that you're not really voting to expand. You're voting for this one facility to have one more option for the people that choose to go there. No, no slot machines on every corner. No, you're, you're the, 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 you'll see in the ballot language it is very strict that it can only be at the state licensed facility. You're not going to see them on corner stores. You're not going to see uh, you're not going to see internet cafes coming back. This very well run, very well regulated facility. We'll have one more game for the people that enjoy it. All right, thank you, Brian Hughes, you. Uh, Meteoric Media Strategies. Thanks so much for your time today. Thanks. And stay with us for more as we head toward Election Day. It's just two days away. That's next on This Week in Jacksonville. This is Pastor R.J. Washington of the Titus Harvest Dome. Join us on Channel 4 every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. We're going to have a God time. Yes. It pays to be a career politician. Take Rod Smith, who voted to increase his own salary several times. On top of his huge salary filing lawsuits, Smith takes another $51,000 taxpayer-funded politician's pension. That's $3,000 more than the average salary of a Florida school teacher, and $12,000 more than a deployed staff sergeant with combat pay. It sure pays to be career politician Rod Smith. This November, we have your all-access food pass. What's really in supermarket-ready meals? Box delivery meals. Are they worth it? Investigations that take you behind the scenes at Costco. We go inside a Purdue chicken farm. This November, only on Oz. Weekdays at 4 on The Local Station. 
Well, Jacksonville is replacing two longtime voices in Congress this year. Corrine Brown did not win her primary battle against Al Lawson, who faces Glow Smith for Congressional District 5. You heard from each of them last week on our show. This morning, the leading candidates for Congressional District 4 include our guest, Dave Bruderly. And this seat replaces Andrew Crenshaw, who surprised a lot of people in April when he announced that he'd retire from the House of Representatives. Former sheriff in Jacksonville, John Rutherford, he won the Republican primary, but did not accept our invitation to join us this morning. So, David, this has long been a, a GOP-focused seat. Right. Why should people check your name instead of what they're used to in terms of seeing an R uh, by the candidate? Because I'm the most qualified man to represent this district in the U.S. Congress. I don't need to be coached up and taught how to be a congressman. I've, I'm a Navy veteran. I'm a businessman. I'm a small business owner, professional engineer. Lived and worked in North Central Florida out of bases in Gainesville and Jacksonville since 1974. I've traveled all over this state on, on business and its advocacy for environmental issues, for clean energy issues. I've dealt with Tallahassee. I've dealt with Washington. I've dealt with Congress. I've dealt with state senators, state representatives. Worked with Lake Ray on the clean fuels initiatives that he helped push through the Florida legislature. I'm a business guy, but I'm also an environmental advocate, and I know how to create jobs. The company I work with in Gainesville was a subsidiary of Reynolds Smith & Hills. We created 600 jobs after the environmental legislation was passed in the 1970s and the 80s. We seized that opportunity to create prosperity for a lot of people. Yeah. Dave, so tell me a little bit more about uh, some of that professional engineer background and, and that, I guess, emphasis in uh, environmental engineering as part of your expertise. What does the Northeast Florida need when it comes to those issues that you could provide? Well, for example, in the uh, mid-70s, we helped the Navy decide to bring the sub base to Kings Bay. I did the environmental dredging, uh, environmental impact analysis and planning on the dredging aspects of that base. Uh, which can be applied today to how do we keep Mayport healthy in the face of rising seas and how do we make sure that we've got the capacity at Mayport to handle both the amphibious ships that are there now, the small small yeah. uh, uh, ships, the new littoral combat ships, right. and maybe get ready for a, a nuclear carrier if that ever works out at the high levels of the Pentagon. So where do you stand on this issue about uh, the deepening the, the, the harbor there or the port? Uh, and this Jacksport effort. You think that's a great idea? Is it a I think, concern? I think, I think we need a plan B. We have 50 feet for Mayport, and we have 50 feet up in Fernandina for the sub base. We have a, a 50 feet uh, available to us at Fernandina, Fernandina port that with a little bit of internal planning could accommodate the, the very small number of supersized container ships that are projected to be coming here from China. Uh, Jacksport needs to support the existing infrastructure with uh, Crowley and Sea Star. Uh, really help the LNG fueling initiative take off in, in the, on the Jones Act routes that go to Puerto Rico and the Caribbean. And we really need, I think, to focus on exports, not imports from China, but exports. How do we build our manufacturing base in this community, like Lake Ray was trying to do, yeah. to support exports to our natural trading partners in the Central South America, the Caribbean, and even Africa? Well, I, I don't want this to be lost. You're talking about, well, I worked with Lake Ray, a Republican. So you're yeah. willing to work across those party he's lines for whatever they... Yes, Lake he's was an that's just like me. Something and, similar, and, yes. Yeah, and I'm more than happy. To, I, a lot of my supporters are Republicans. You know, I'm, I'm not a one-party one guy. I'm an independent Democrat, fiscally conservative, socially progressive. I believe in the 14th Amendment. And, you know, I believe in the Second Amendment. I believe in the First Amendment. I believe in the whole Constitution. And, and the government should be working for the people and uh, we're cap I'm a capitalist. I believe that government regulation should be designed to serve the people, not the big money special interests, and, and we should work in the interest of, of, of creating jobs here in Jacksonville and in Florida. Maybe last thing we get to in our segment here, but you've told us that you think the current system focusing on presidential candidates almost exclusively isn't very smart because Congress plays such a big role on all those same federal issues. So what is that biggest issue that Congress should address and you would try and address if you were elected congressman? Well, I believe that we really need to focus on the economy and the job creation. And we need to get, you know, rather than just saying cut regulations, let's make regulations work for the people. Let's make regulations to protect our clean air, our clean water, our stable climate, clean energy. Let's make this create the regulatory framework so that, you know, capitalism and, and private sector uh, people can make investments that not only are profitable for them, but also serve the commons, the public interest. You know, that's the whole purpose of government, according to Adam Smith, who's the father of capitalism, is that government uh, should work to provide laws, rules, and regulations that protect the commons from exploitation yeah. by the mercantilists. And right now, the 1% is winning, 
and the vast middle class, they're losing. We need to turn that around. And government has to do that. It's not going to happen by natural forces. Dave Bruderly, a pleasure, Lee. Uh, pr uh, Dave Bruderly, a pleasure to get to visit with you, if I can say that correctly. Appreciate it. Congressional District 4 candidate uh, coming up here on Election Day, which is just two days away. Thanks for your time today. Thank you, Ken. All right, a brief look at Amendment 1 on your ballot. It's all about solar energy in Florida. You want to stay with us. That's next. Introducing Golden Corral 7-Day Brunch. Every day at 9.30 a.m. Enjoy classic brunch favorites like chicken and waffles, Monte Cristo sandwiches, made-to-order omelets, crispy bacon, and your lunch favorites. Your day just got a whole lot tastier. Only at Golden Corral. If it's possible to be famous and yet not really well-known, that describes the father who raised me. My father not only has the strength and ability necessary to be our next president, but also the kindness and the greatness of heart that will enable him to be the leader that this country needs. My father wants all Americans to succeed. No one has more faith in the American people than my father. He will fight for you all the time, every time. I'm Donald Trump and I approve this message. I'm Dan Morgan of Morgan & Morgan. My whole life I've been surrounded by my family's law firm. I spent summers working there and learning our business. Many dinnertime conversations were spent talking about cases, our clients, and their families. My family's life work has been about fairness, justice, and helping others at their time of need. I'm happy to join my dad, mom, and brothers to fight that good fight. Morgan & Morgan, for the people, dot com. America is the greatest country in the world. And keeping it that way is every generation's debt to the next. Today, our country is more divided than ever, and our challenges are growing more grave, threatening who we are and everything we hope to be. I'm Marco Rubio, and I approved this message because this election is about the future and about keeping America the one place in the world where any dream can still come true. Monday, Tom Wills and Mary Bear break down local key election battles from medical marijuana to the new faces fighting to represent you in D.C. Election 2016 preview, Monday at 8 on Channel 4 and streaming live on News4Jax.com. You're watching This Week in Jacksonville on Channel 4. And joining us now, President of the Solar Energy Industry Association, this is Tom Kimbis. Tom, thanks for coming down and, and visiting with us. Why would a national solar energy organization oppose a solar energy amendment in Florida like we've got on the ballot amendment one. Well, it may, uh, first of all, thanks for having me on the show. Sure. And, and what may seem like a pro-solar amendment in amendment one is actually an anti-solar amendment. Voting for yes on amendment one actually would hurt the solar industry in Florida. And it's important enough to us as a national trade association for solar to come down here to Florida to explain it to people. It seems like, some, some of the research I've done, it seems like solar is moving ahead in Florida. Uh, how would this not help things happen uh, in terms of solar energy and development here in the state? There's many things that could help Florida, uh, Florida's market for solar grow, but this is not one of them. Amendment 1 is sort of a wolf in sheep's clothing. What it does is it pretends to provide uh, new rights to you as a homeowner when you already have those rights. So essentially it's giving you nothing in its first sentence. In its second sentence, what it does is it allows the monopoly utilities to come to the legislature, to come to the Public Services Commission, and ask for new fees, new charges to be put on solar. So if you're a homeowner and thinking about going solar, if Amendment 1 passes, chances are solar is going to be a more expensive choice for you rather than a less expensive choice. All right, so we are about balance, and I'm hearing your viewpoint. I want to make sure that folks can hear uh, the viewpoint of uh, the folks who are proponents of it. Joining us... Uh, here, just so you can hear a little bit more about it. Uh, for the other side of the issue, we reached out to a gentleman named Screvin Watson. He's part of Consumers for Smart Solar. It's a coalition behind the amendment saying that they want common sense consumer protection regulations in the solar power industry. Amendment one does, you know, as we talked about, it, we because you and I are having this discussion. It's, you know, it's getting solar to the forefront of people's minds. We have more people looking at solar. It's growing in Florida. That's undisputable. Uh, so it puts the protections of you uh, generating your own electricity at your business or home. But number two, and I think this is why I got involved in Amendment One, was basically that government. If you believe government has a role to protect consumers or government has a role to regulate energy sources, and in this case solar, then we leave government in there. And when we're talking about government, we're talking about cities, counties, legislature, or the PSC, in the process 
to protect consumers. The other side doesn't want government in the role. Uh, they want, you know, that solar, uh, uh, solar, third-party solar sales folks to have, you know, carte blanche, exemption from government regulations. We think that's dangerous. And so Amendment 1 protects consumers, but it also gives you the right in the Constitution to produce your own electricity. So, Tom Kim has said a lot of that sounds really good to me as a consumer. Hey, I get some protection. I get to make my own choices. I get to hold on to what I produce. Your viewpoint is different than that. Yeah, I mean, it sounds good, but it, it actually is untrue. Uh, Attorney General Pam Bondi has all the tools she needs at her disposal to uh, protect consumers. There's a consumer protection law here in Florida that applies to solar companies. There's been fraud and contract laws on the books for decades here again. So that's not the issue. What you're hearing is actually steer the monopoly utility steering the argument away from the real issue, which is trying to make rooftop solar uncompetitive so the monopoly utilities don't have to compete. So uh, it sounds like what you're saying is what some other people have described to me. Hey, Kent, this amendment one sounds like solar versus big utility companies. Is that how you view it? It is, and you know, not every utility is necessarily opposed to solar. In fact, utilities are some of the largest users of solar in the state. But when it comes to rooftops, that's where their utilities have a monopoly, and they don't want to give up that monopoly, and they don't want you to have the choice to put solar on your roof. They would rather uh, institute new fees and new charges and have to give away any of that sort of monopoly rights. That's why we're trying to you know, inform people right. how to make an educated choice. Right. So about 30 seconds or so for your response, if you don't mind. But it, I've heard, hey, solar, it's been more expensive than we really wanted. Is that true? Solar has been coming down in price precipitously. So we've fallen about 60% in price over the last seven or eight years. When Right now, we're at a tipping point in Florida, where Florida consumers can go solar at a price that's getting very close, if not the same, as what they're getting from their conventional electricity sources. That's what's making the monopoly utilities really nervous, and that's why A1 is on the ballot. Yeah, and it sounds like, in addition, even if it was the same price, we've got a clean alternative for energy here. Tom Kimbis, I appreciate it. Great to meet you today and hear the other side of the story for what's on the ballot on Election Day. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Ken. All right, so I want to remind you that uh, election time is coming up tomorrow night, Monday night, 8 to 9 p.m. Join us here on Channel 4. We've got an election preview special that you don't want to miss. And then our special live coverage for election night begins at 7 p.m. Our commitment is that we are on air with you starting at 7 until we have a new president named. Hopefully that's before midnight, but we'll find out, so stay with us. All right, by next Sunday at this time, we're going to be talking about what happened in election 2016 and why. Congressman Jason Altmyer is with us, Jacksonville's Burt Ralston, among those who will join us for that debrief. I'm Kent Justice. Thanks for watching both on air and online at news4jax.com. At News 4 Jax, we're always covering the news, even when we're not on TV. Stay informed, on the go, and online at news4jax.com.